Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to talk about an optimization technique called object pooling that will make a significant performance boost in your Unity games. If your game contains a bunch of objects which should be instantiated and destroyed in runtime, then this method will reduce the risk of FPS drop while running the game. The logic is very simple. We instantiate every object we need in the game while game is loading and we use and reuse them as we need. This technique is very effective because instantiation and destruction of objects is very expensive and will take a lot of processing power. So without wasting any time, let's get into the video. I have simple scene set up here. Here is a character with a gun and if I click the mouse button, he will start firing. There are two simple scripts running in this scene. One is attached to the bullet and other to the player. In the bullet script, I am moving the bullet to the right and feeding a bullet speed to control the speed of the bullet from the inspector. And there is this start function which will set a 2 second timer to the bullet. After 2 seconds, it will get destroyed. Simple script, nothing to worry about. And in the player, I am instantiating the bullet at a position called gun point while hitting the mouse button. I attached the bullet script to the bullet and made it to a prefab. Attached player script to the player and dragged everything to the corresponding slot. By the way, gun point is an empty game object which is placed in front of the gun. While hit play, everything works fine. While looking in the hierarchy, you can see that when I hit the mouse button, the bullets are instantiated and after some time, it get destroyed. So if I keep pressing the button continuously, there's a lot of instantiation and destruction happening, which is not good for the CPU. So to get rid of this problem, we are using object pooling method. So in this scene, there's a player and an empty game object to specify the bullet firing point called gun point. First, we need to make a script for the bullet and make it to a prefab. So create a script for the bullet and open in Visual Studio. Make a public bullet speed variable and a time duration for the bullet. And instead of assigning a private life timer to the life duration in start function, I am doing it in on enable function. I will talk about the reason in a bit. In update function, I am moving the bullet to the right and decrementing the life timer. I am also checking if the life timer is less than or equal to zero or not. If it is, then I am disabling the bullet. Remember in the previous method we were destroying the bullet. Now I am making the bullet as a prefab and deleting it from the hierarchy. Next we need to make a pool of these bullets. For that I am making an empty game object called pooling manager. Create a script and attach to the pooling manager and open in Visual Studio. First we need to take the bullet prefab. For that I am making a public game object called bullet prefab. Next we need a list to store the bullets we are going to instantiate. For that I am making a private list of game objects and calling it bullets. In awake function I am giving the size of the list as bullet amount and initializing it as a public integer. Now we need to instantiate bullet amount of bullets and set its parent as pooling manager. Disable them in the hierarchy and add them to the list. I am assigning instantiated bullet prefab to a game object type prefab instance and set its pairing to the game object. And also set it to disable mode and add them to the bullets list. Next we need a function to check if any bullet is available in the pool and if it is then return the bullet. For that I am using a for each loop to go through every bullet in bullets list. If a bullet is there in an inactive mode, then we need to set them active and return it. But there will be a case in which all the bullets are currently in use and no extra bullets could return. In that case, we need to instantiate another bullet and return it. So that I am copying this code and paste it here and I am not disabling them now. And I am just returning that prefab instance. We wrote the function, but we are not calling it anywhere. We need all these happen when we click the mouse button. For that I am attaching a new script to the player and opening it in Visual Studio. In this script we are taking a transform value for showing where our gun is pointed. In uptime function we need to call the getBullet function which is in other script. For that I am making a static instance and another function to return the instance. Don't forget to write instance equal to this in await function. Now in the player script, I can call the function without directly referencing to the script. 
I am assigning it to the game object variable and assigning its position to the gunpoint position. Save everything and head back to Unity and hit play. Now you can see the pulley manager instantly makes the bullet and when I start firing it just enabling and disabling bullets from the pool. There won't be much performance difference in this scenario but if you are making a game for performance constrained platforms like mobile, Nintendo Switch or even in PC this kind of optimization practices will help for a smoother and faster gameplay. So this is it. So if you like this video hit like, subscribe and hit the bell notification for more tutorials about Unity and game development. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.